there is one plant that surprised me this year in the garden. It had to be this one right here. Now, I grew this actually on a whim. It was something that was gonna, gonna be completely fun and something that I thought was kind of a novelty. And I guess it still is, but it outperformed every other plant other than the tomatoes. But every other plant in this garden in terms of production disease and pest uh, tolerance or even resistance it was amazing it brought in pollinators it had beautiful flowers beautiful leaves and a super long growing season this plant right here is a loofah now i don't know about you but i always thought that loofahs came from the ocean they have that same shape right homegrown loofah now I gotta say, even if this hadn't produced these amazing botanical structures that people could actually use to, you know, exfoliate, clean their dishes, which I actually am doing and it works really well. But this plant, up until about two weeks ago when the wind was just crazy, we had the Santa Ana winds, which really kind of crisped everything up. This plant was green from early June, maybe May, all the way through till two weeks ago, covered in green leaves. Now I have to say, plants all around it got pests and disease. I had two cucumber plants right next to it, same family, cucurbit family, right? They were taken out by diseases that I don't even know what, the, what it was. And I've asked around and neither did other people. So it beat those. There was a, uh, the beans right next to it had white fly, and um, the tomato, the Roma tomatoes right next to it had white fly. The squash all around the garden had mildew and still does. This thing was virtually untouched. It was also covered in beautiful flowers that just kept coming all season long. And I've probably gotten about 30, approximately 30 lufa gourds off of this plant. I've sent them home with, that was like, that's like everyone's parting gift when they come here. They got to take home a loofah and some seeds because they produce an incredible amount of seeds. And the flowers are still coming. And the ends are actually still super green. It's just the old part of the plant that's dying. Now here we are in the middle of October and this plant is still producing baby loofah gourds. I don't have any loofah gourds on there that are perfect for harvesting right now. Um, I will tell you, I'm gonna pull one off anyway. This one is, is the closest to it. Now, you don't, in my opinion, you don't want to wait until the loofah gourd goes completely brown and papery before you harvest. It's much harder to peel. Well, that wasn't. Okay, so maybe in the... <laughs> so maybe in the middle. But still, no, this is a little hard over here. It comes off in little little flakes now this is a little bit early but you're gonna know that it's ripe and ready to um, to harvest when you, it turns yellow all over and you squeeze it and you can feel kind of the give between the skin and the inside part this still is a little bit firm But what you're gonna notice is this end almost comes off just naturally as it's hanging there. The end pops off if you don't harvest it. And look what happens. Those are all seeds and they just keep coming. This thing is loaded with hundreds of seeds. And now I'm gonna have hundreds of plants coming up right here. Hold on. So here's the thing about this loofah plant. I recommend if you love some, growing something unique that is going to be the star Anytime somebody visits your garden, trust me, I've had a lot of people over here this year and this has been the star of the show. The tomatoes were great, they produced a ton, but you don't see this every day. And if you follow some simple rules, they're really easy to grow. Now, I've learned quite a bit of what works and what doesn't over this past growing season. And so this coming spring, when I'm going through and planting these again, I want you guys to join me so that we can grow them together. Now, I got the seeds from Baker Creek. So 
make sure this winter, if you want to grow some loofah, get your seeds. And if you live in a cold winter climate, get them early because they do need to be started indoors about six weeks before your last frost date because they do need an incredibly long growing season to get enough out of them. So get your seeds early, order them in December, January, and I'm going to start them earlier than I would need to. I don't necessarily need to here in this climate to start them out indoors early, but just so we can all grow along together. And I know a lot of you are in colder winter climates, so I'm going to start mine early. Um, tell me down below when you guys have, like, when is your last frost date? And then I'll count back six months from kind of the average or the earlier ones, and we'll all get to start together. I'm assuming probably around March-ish. Um, but let me know. Now, if you guys have grown loofah and you have some tips, or if you're like me and thought they came from the ocean, let me know down in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed so that when we start growing loofah together in the spring, you'll get a notification. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time.